Friday morning, last day of the boot camp. Today we are going to visit some companies. Uh, first one, first place we are going is called Pita Factory. I have no idea whatsoever what it is, but I guess we'll see in a moment if they let me do a video shooting there. Breakfast is down, so uh, I'm just waiting my friends from Halmstad. Also, Tim's father has joined us, and we are going to take bikes to go over. Okay, so here we are going to be the factory. Mostly 90% of the work here is commercial through the stops. But for the facilities and everything is so. Um, yes, so as the Rasmus also mentioned, we met many years ago when I moved from uh, Madrid back to Copenhagen. Uh, was fascinated in maker culture, maker spaces. This was in 2013. There was just two Fab Labs <laughs> in, uh, in Denmark. One in uh, Nestle, in Copenhagen. Yeah. <laughs> we have all of them. Um, and I think I actually applied for a job. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was hired at the Copenhagen School of Design and Technology as a teacher of digital manufacturing and prototyping and entrepreneurship. And I also, uh, when I learned they were starting up in Valkyrie, I was there at the founding meeting or first meeting there. And I was also doing some courses and teaching uh, in the beginning and being an active member. Um, and then, as everybody here probably knows, the fascination just continues to grow and do more, to do more things in the major spaces. And then I started with my uh, colleague, who is not here now, maybe we'll meet him later, uh, Rasmus. Uh, we actually started building something, which was a little box where you had the, does anybody know Tramgear? These yeah. uh, outdoor camping, yeah. So basically we took the, the little burner, um, it's an alcohol burner uh, from Tramgear, we built it into a wooden box and we had this idea that if you have a cafe in the city, you can rent out these boxes and people can make their own coffee in the parks. So kind of expanding their reach. Uh, and uh, so we tried to build this and we found out that we couldn't really find one maker space where we could do everything. So we could do some laser cutting and go hidden fab lab. Then we could do some woodworking in, uh, in the fab lab book, which is uh, Roskilde universities. Fat lab, but luckily open for everyone, at least on Tuesdays. Uh, so we were kind of going around, and um, and we figured out that we could do different things in different spaces, but we couldn't do everything in, in one space, because no space were really equipped to do the entire product. Uh, and also we were aware that as soon as we wanted to actually make a box to sell it, we would be we would be kicked out of the fab labs because most of the fab labs work on on this idea that you don't pay to use the machine but you have to share your ideas and you cannot do commercial work. So we thought that there was probably other people like us, entrepreneurs that want to to do something commercial and build a business. So we abandoned uh, the, the project that actually never finished. <laughs> we have some very nice prototypes. Um, and then our project became to, to make a, a more commercial oriented makerspace for startups um, or for other companies that have maybe something they're working on but they want to expand into to prototyping and more physical objects. And that started as a, as a long journey because as most startups we didn't have any financing uh, so we just had uh, actually, also uh, where we are now in Suham, so a bit further down the road, there was an abandoned radiator factory where we could get some very cheap temporary square meters. Uh, ironically, with no heating, because the radiator factory was abandoned. <laughs> so we had this gas burner in winter to keep us warm, and then we bought a, a laser cutter, which is uh, one of the greatest tools in a, in a maker space. It's very effective, very fast for prototyping. And then we just took whatever hand tools we had in our basement and 
put that on the wall and then we started uh, selling memberships. So in the beginning it was just a uh, after work project. So we both had uh, the full-time jobs, I was teaching. Uh, and so it was a uh, very tough start of years because I was working from eight to four and then biking down here and unlocking the door at five until 10 o'clock in the evening and then back and then repeat. Uh, and we were also open in weekends. Uh, of course, we were sharing the, the workload of who had to open. But, um, and then slowly we got more and more members. We could buy more and more machines. And uh, we moved to another temporary <laughs> location. Uh, got some more machines, uh, a very large CNC. Uh, and then that attracted more members wanting to use that machine. And we're slowly expanding our workshop uh, in wood because wood is one of the materials that most people can work in. Metalwork is a bit more narrow, user group uh, requires different skills. Um, and then we, in 2016, we founded uh, Onabrun Makerspace, which is now called Makerspace Langebro. Have you been there or are you going there? Okay. Uh, but it's, um, it's a very cool location. It's basically located in the bridge head of, uh, Bridge next to Blockshop, which is Copenhagen's new innovation center. But but to my big disappointment, they built a one, I think one billion Danish kroners uh, innovation center with no workshop. <laughs> so uh, I was like, okay, what kind of innovation are you going to do there? But uh, of course, I also see things from a very mega space point of view. So uh, we built a small workshop for them, which was more office space with some 3D printers and you know, vinyl cutters and, and these kind of desktops. Um, and so we started that with the, the Danish Association for the, what do you call it, for the knowledge and expansion of maker culture. So it's, a, it's an association that works for promoting maker culture. Um, but our issue was that even though it's a very cool location in the bridgehead, so basically when you walk out the door, you're almost at the canal. It was very small, uh, and we had a large CNC uh, and other machines which take up a lot of space, but we just had one room, so it doesn't really work to have a CNC running and office in the other side. So we were there for, for two years, uh, working with the municipality of Copenhagen to get some more space. Uh, there's an abandoned parking facility just on the other side, but, you know, due to local regulation and municipality plans and so on, doesn't always work so fast. I think two years in, in the municipality is a short time frame, but for us it was a long time. So in the end, uh, we, we had to move because we simply couldn't put our machines. And we were lucky enough to find the, this building, which is the first place we've been, which is not temporary. And as you know, one thing is the machines in the maker space, but another big part is infrastructure. And infrastructure is not easy to move around when you have all your exhaust pipes and all the electricity and everything you've built. So obviously we we're also aware of, of, of kind of investing much in infrastructure when we knew we were in a temporary place. So we we're very happy uh, to find this place. Uh, we moved in in the beginning of 2018 uh, in a other part, which is now the wood workshop, textile workshop, and photo workshop, and other things. We'll, I'll show you that in the tour. Um, and then we, uh, we actually made uh, an agreement with the owner of the building, uh, who unlike other people that buy these kind of properties, uh, when, we, when we moved in, it, it has just been used for storage. And there has been minimum maintenance, basically just keeping the building property and having some temporary renters uh, different places. And usually you wait until you can destroy the whole building and then you can build an apartment block and everybody makes a lot of money. But luckily uh, the owner of this building wants to develop the building. Uh, so it's, uh, I don't know the exact figure, but it's tens and tens of millions that have been poured into the development of the building. Basically, everything is new. You can see here the floor, the ceiling, the lamps, all the electricity, everything has been renovated and that's kind of continuing everywhere in the building. 
and I think the entire building is around 30,000 square meters. Um, so that was, of course, very nice, and we uh, made a, a partnership where we uh, we sold some of our shares to kind of uh, develop Beta Factory and the building together, and we were then slowly expanding into more and more square meters. Uh, now we are on 2,300 square meters, and adding more square meters on the first floor, so we would we're going to be around 4,500 in six months, I think. So it's just been continuing, continuing. I'm not sure if the workshop will el ever stop growing, but at some point that I would also like to stop, you know, painting and doing the walls and, and stuff. Um, and here we have the possibilities to, to kind of execute on the vision that we have. Uh, and we call ourselves an industrial makerspace to kind of set us a little bit apart uh, and what we mean with uh, an industrial vega space is that we not only do prototyping, we actually do small-scale uh, manufacturing. So it's the difference between being able to make one table and being able to make 46 tables. And actually, all the, the, everything you see here is, is made here. So all the furniture um, is, is made here and designed here. And we have these uh, desks where we made the desk top plate, uh, and I think we made 38 desktops in three hours. Uh, so yeah, we can. And uh, our customers are in the woodworking section. It's uh, cabinet makers, so professional cabinet makers, ranging from small, where it's just one person to uh, where it's six to 10 people. Um, so they're all new startup uh, companies. And then we have uh, our metal workshop, where we have blacksmiths, we have a textile workshop, where we have, um, what do they call people who sew? Uh, tailors, yeah. yes, tailors, yeah, um, and so on. So, so we, are, we are slowly expanding. Like your products. So we have the photo session, the photo station, we have a very nice camera and maps and everything, so you can take very nice uh, product photos. And then we are building a very large kitchen. 